Hey, so it's been a little while since I've done an update, so I thought I'd walk you through a few of the things the, the engine team has been doing in terms of uh, our part interrogation engine. The, the way Toolpath works, if, you, if I haven't explained it to you before, is, is effectively we're going to interrogate the part for the machinable features. And this isn't necessarily features in the sense of a CAD feature, but a, a feature that, that is the way you would think about machining it as a machinist. And if you're a machinist watching this like me, you're, you're probably identifying a few features on the part um, that you would know to be problematic um, for, for some automated systems. Uh, one of those uh, features is the undercuts. There's actually two different examples of undercuts I've put on this part. And the other example is this slot uh, for, for the, um, the clamp, the split clamp. Uh, a, a nuance of the, the slot will be these, these little slots coming in on the side of the part. And so I'm gonna show you what we've done to interrogate this, this part in a way that would make sense to a machinist. If we look at the setups, uh, we can we can slice slice through and see how we've attacked the part, um, and I'm going to start by looking at this open pocket, and you can see on the open pocket here uh, we've captured the 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 overhangs and that dovetail and sliced this feature up into something that we would uh, attack with with the exception of the undercuts, and then we can go down to these T slot features and and then we've identified those separately. So that's the that's the first thing that's I think uh, pretty unique. When I look at the profiles, um, you'll see that we've profiled around the entire part and we've capped over the end of these small slots here and the split clamp as well. Uh, oftentimes and previously on Toolpath, uh, we would have tried to select a small cutter that could fit into those areas when you know as a machinist you would cap that off and come into those features separately. Um, and so again, we've, we've kind of closed that off. Uh, if I flip the part over, uh, this is where you'll see that we've come in to cut those those slots, um, and 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 completed the hole. Uh, but that's that's attacking the the part and slicing it up the the way we would expect it. I can now export it to Fusion and let's just take a look at the results in there. Um, the last time I did this part, there was uh, there was a bit of an issue. Um, that I'm going to talk about because we're not the whole way there yet. I am going to include the vice too, by the way. That's a, a fun update we've been working on. Um, so we're up, we're running into into Fusion now. We're taking all the decisions our AI had made using the Fusion API to recreate uh, all of the tool paths. And this is where some of the mismatches happen sometimes. But we've we've taken all of our decisions. We've used that to uh, create an assembly with a vice. Uh, we've modeled the stock. We've imported the stock and then we've created the setups and we've created the tool paths. Within the setups, uh, you can see this roughing operation has gone through and, and roughed out the core of the part. Um, we, we attacked that bore uh, separately than the slots. We used a larger tool in the bore. Um, and again, these are the kinds of things that seem obvious for the untrained eye, but somebody that's used CAM before is going to know that that can be challenging. I do want to mention some areas that you could have uh, could have some problems on these T slots, and maybe I should just simulate it to show. Uh, although you can you can see the gouge here. If I ran a simulation on Fusion, you'd see a gouge, um, and so we do need to go in and edit this. Now the good news is it's created as if a user had created it, so all all these tool paths look uh, just like a user your intern had come in and, and created it. Um, but, but you'll see that, that lead-in, the default lead-ins that exist um, inside of Fusion were um, a little larger and that resulted, uh, that resulted in a gouge. So I'm just going to come in and uh, reduce those lead-ins uh, and now I don't have a gouge anymore. So you want to make sure that you check some of those final settings and the mismatch that might happen between Toolpath and Fusion. Uh, but all in all, uh, I think the team has made great progress. I, I hope if you're using Toolpath, you, you see this as a, a step forward in, in how we're able to interrogate a part and then apply the tooling to your part. Anyway, cheers.